So today we're talking about crafting a college essay that stands out. And just to introduce myself, my name is Marla Ross. I'm a staff member here at QuestBridge. And I also happen to be a QuestBridge alum and former college prep scholar as well. So it's great to be here presenting to you all from the other side, having gone through this process quite some time ago now. Um, but I definitely understand how daunting these college essays can be, especially as this may be your first time writing an essay of this nature. So hopefully today's QuestCast will be helpful. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead one second and disable my camera just so we can focus on the presentation and then we'll get started. So we'll be starting with an overview of the prompt and we'll highlight a few key elements um, then we'll brainstorm an essay together and develop an outline. After that, we'll discuss some tips when you're drafting your essay, and we'll test your knowledge a bit on what we've covered. And finally, we'll discuss a few resources that are available to you. So one thing we want to communicate to you is that writing this essay will give you a head start um, so the College Prep Scholars Program application automatically rolls over into your National College Match application. So come senior year this fall, when you log into your National College Match application, you'll find that many of the things that you entered as a junior will already be there, including this essay. So you'll be able to edit your essay for the National College Match. Don't worry, you can rework it completely, or you can even submit a different essay. Um, but it is definitely helpful having your essay for the College Prep Scholars Program. Um, as it gives you a starting kickoff point. And then even if you decide not to apply to the National College Match, you'll, you'll still have the practice writing an essay like this, so it will help you in general to get started now. So just think of writing this essay as an investment for your future college applications. So there's a few things about the prompt that I'd like to point out before we move on. So. First, the essay has a word limit of 650 words, so keep that in mind as you're writing it. I definitely recommend using the word check function on whatever outside document you're using to draft and edit your essay. Uh, personally, I know I can be on the long-winded side when I'm writing essays, so it's a good way to stay on track, um, and that way you don't end up copying and pasting your essay into the application and finding out it's way too long. Um, also, just remember that this is a biographical essay, so it should be about you. It's okay to include others, of course, but ultimately the focus should come back to you, um, and we'll talk about that later. And there are a few different pieces to this prompt, but I do want to highlight that not only do we want you to include factors and challenges that have shaped you, but more importantly, we want to know how these have helped you grow. So these are just some things really to focus on when you're looking at the prompt. So let's go into our brainstorm. So I sent this worksheet earlier, but if you weren't here or in case it got lost, I'm gonna go ahead and send it one more time. And then if you could use your raise your hand function to let me know that you see this worksheet in the chat, Okay, great. I'm seeing a lot of raised hands. Good. Okay. Yeah, so definitely, if you can, go ahead and click that link and download this worksheet. Um, if for some reason you can't download it, you can find it in our Student Resource Center, and I'll show you later where you can find that. Um, and it's totally fine if you can't download it right now. You can take notes on another document or a piece of paper, whatever is most convenient for you. All right, so let's begin with an example. So for the purposes of this webinar, let's just pretend that I'm the example student writing an essay. So I'll begin by writing by thinking of a broad topic that immediately comes to mind when I'm thinking which parts of my life I believe have been particularly influential. So let's say for this example that I write down family as my broad topic, and that's pretty broad. So we're starting with something very general here. So I need to specify a little bit more. So in the box below, I specify a circumstance, which is that I live in a single parent household. But again, this is still a very general idea. It applies to a lot of students. So at this point, I need to find really specific examples to make my unique story about being from a single parent household shine through. 
So remember, we want students to respond to the entire prompt. So by discussing how these factors and challenges help me grow, um, I'm able to go into greater detail about my circumstance and really hone in on my unique point. So maybe I want to say that living in a single parent household has given me greater independence because my mom has to work long hours. And because of this, I had to learn how to cook for myself and my siblings with a limited budget. So now we want to hear from you. So, so far we've talked about family, um, but what other broad topics do you feel you could write your essay on? So I'm going to re-enable chat, just one moment. Make sure when you are chatting, it's to all panelists and attendees. That way everyone can see your responses, but it should be enabled now. So if you want, go ahead and share. Okay, identity, awesome. That's a great one. And only if you're comfortable, you don't have to to share. Loss, that's another good general topic to share. School, another great one. Motivation. Finding a passion, yeah, that's awesome. Mental health, that's a good one. Location. Great. Yeah, these are all really, really great topics. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead. Oh, thanks for sharing. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and um, and turn off the chat again. Thank you all for sharing. And we're going to move on. But again, you can use the Q&A function if you have questions. Okay. So as part of my brainstorming process, let's say that I've selected community and academics um, as two other broad topics. So they're both things I could delve deeper into to talk about factors that have influenced me. So again, let's say as the example student, my community is a general factor that has been influential to me. Um, particularly the fact that it has a large immigrant population is something that has been very significant. Um, so again, that's still very general and many students may write about their diverse communities being an influential factor in their lives. So how can you get more specific or how could I get more specific in this example about how I was able to grow from this factor and how my community shaped me? So I'm gonna launch a poll in just a moment with three different examples of unique points I might include as the writer. And I want everyone to let me know which of these three, assuming that they're all true, uh, would be a good and specific unique point to ensure that I am illustrating my story and standing out from the crowd. So one moment, let me launch this poll. Okay, you should be able to see the poll now. All right, I'm seeing a, a pretty even split between two of the answers. I'll share the results once a few more of y'all have voted. Okay, I'm gonna end the polling. Thank you everyone for voting. So I'm gonna share the results. So I see the highest scoring was or the most number of votes was I learned the importance of diversity with the second being I grew to appreciate the Korean supermarkets in the area. So I see that many of you selected importance of diversity um, and learning about other cultures. So although these may be broad takeaways from my essay, they aren't necessarily points that are unique to my specific story. They're still kind of general and they apply to many students. So just remember your unique point should be highly specific to your story. So here, I grew to appreciate Korean supermarkets in the area. That's a pretty specific point. It may not apply to as many other students. Um, so this is really how your essay can stand out from others that may have a similar broad topic is honing in on something very specific to you. Okay. Okay. 
So I have the third broad topic of academics, um, but I'll give you a little bit of time to think of your own third broad topic. Um, then go ahead and fill out your specific circumstance as it relates to your broad topic. So just think on this and then raise your hand after you filled out or you thought of both of those boxes. Okay, I see, see some raised hands, but we'll wait a little bit longer. Okay, all right, I'm seeing more raised hands now, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep going, but I encourage you to keep thinking about these topics throughout the QuestCast. Um, so now take some time to think about the how. So what are some unique points and stories that will help your writing stand out and be specific? So maybe jot down, if you have pencil and paper or if you have a different document, jot down a few bullet points of details that this circum about this circumstance that could illustrate um, the story and make it unique. So let's think about this one, if you want to think about this one rather than your own. So for the broad topic of academics, um, what do you think could make it unique? And if you think your broad topic is a common one that a lot of other students may easily write about, then it's particularly important to hone in on those key details that allows you to make a unique point. Okay, and just because we've given you three separate columns to brainstorm three separate topics, it doesn't mean you can only write about one topic in your essay. So you can absolutely include many different topics in your essay, as long as they all tie together, and we'll take a look at what this might mean in a second. But for now, let's focus on one topic. So let's decide that out of these three topics of family, community, and academics, I select family as the topic that I want to expound upon for my biographical essay. So it may be useful to think of a common thread that ties the different ideas of my brainstorming and essay draft together. Brainstorming beforehand to really hone in on the key details you want to include will help avoid later confusion and frustration. So I see a common thread here, which is resourcefulness. So this means that everything I write about will somehow relate to my resourcefulness within the context of my family and household. So what's an intuitive way to write about all this? So in the first paragraph, I introduce my family, my siblings, and my family situation. In the second paragraph, I hone in on the great responsibility of buying food for my siblings with $20. In the third paragraph, I show my growth and the fact that I have perfected the art of cooking entire meals with only $20. There is a common thread in this essay that I am resourceful. This is the key theme that I want the reader to take away from this essay that is not already present in other sections of the application. Paragraph one sets the backdrop for the student to be resourceful. Paragraph two presents the opportunity. And paragraph three details when and how the student demonstrated resourcefulness. I don't include every single detail about my life, but by having a common thread to focus on, I'm writing a coherent and unique essay. So I'm gonna look back at my brainstorming worksheet and see if there's anything else I could integrate into my essay about resourcefulness as a family member, which again, in answering the prompt, is something that has influenced or shaped me. In some cases, you may want to discuss more than one factor or challenge that has influenced you, so let's look at the other two columns I've written within the community and academics. So maybe I want to discuss both my family and my community in order to outline it in a way that would create a cohesive story, it is important that I find that common thread that we talked about earlier that will tie all of these different ideas together. So in this case, I expand the common thread of resourcefulness by adding the detail that I am particularly resourceful in cooking for others 
whether that's at home cooking meals for my siblings or my use of Korean spices and ingredients in volunteering to cook for festivities. So how would I go about the outlining process? Let's integrate some more brainstorming pieces into my outline talking about my family. Now that I wanna incorporate details about my community, I added these key details. So now you can see that I have incorporated details from both my family section as well as my community section to really draw out my resourcefulness in cooking for others and my appreciation of Korean food. This is just a quick example of how, even if you want to cover multiple factors or challenges in your essay, you should make sure that they are all tied together with a common thread that can tell your story in a coherent matter or coherent manner. So now let's go through some drafting tips. So the first tip is to show and don't tell. So I'm sure many of you have heard this phrase before and it's key here. Make sure you're adding descriptive details to really bring your story to life. The second tip is to focus on yourself. So it's great to include or mention others in your essay, but the main focus should always circle back to you. And the third and final tip is to remain positive. So it's okay to talk about challenges. We encourage that, but when doing so, just make sure you frame them in a way that demonstrates resilience or growth. And we'll talk about each of these tips in more depth. So we're gonna discuss, we're gonna go through each of the tips and discuss a few examples, starting with the first one. So example A says, my mother works long hours to provide for me and my siblings. She does not come home until midnight. As the eldest, I am in charge of cooking meals for my brothers and sisters. It was hard at first, but eventually I found ways to cook meals on a budget. The key was using flavorful spices to create great dishes. From this experience, I learned how to be resourceful. Example B says, there is something therapeutic about the smell of spices sauteing in a pan of caramelizing onions. Nothing is more relaxing after a long day at school than standing over the stove gently coaxing these ingredients. In 30 minutes and for only $20, I have a delicious dinner prepared for me and my four siblings. There's always enough left when my mother returns from her 12 hour shift at the hospital. So as you may be able to tell, example B gives more detail and description and it uses the senses and just overall paints a stronger picture than an example A. You can even probably tell, I feel when I'm reading it, I feel more engaged in that second example. So we're gonna quickly test your knowledge on what we just discussed and see how these two examples compare. So take a minute to read over these two responses, looking for which one uses greater detail and then use the raise your hand function to let me know when you're ready so I can launch the poll. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of raised hands now, so I'm gonna go ahead and launch the poll. So let me know which one do you think, which version, version has greater detail?
Okay, great. I'm going to go ahead and end the polling and I'll share the results. And it's overwhelmingly example A, which is the correct answer. So I'm going to stop sharing the results. So yeah, I think as most of you can tell, um, it's example A is the correct answer because it has concrete details that paint a picture of the applicant's life and reveal compelling details about their character. So in example B, the applicant tells the reader what that they have a strong work ethic, whereas in example A, the applicant shows the reader that they have a strong work ethic through a story. So it's a bit more detailed, or I would say a lot more detailed in example A than in example B. So we're gonna do the same thing for the second tip, which is to focus on yourself. So example A reads, my mother's hands never shake. Even when she is troubled, she never shows it. Once when she received the phone call about my grandfather's death, her face distorted, her lips qu quivered and tears streamed down her face, but her hands remained still, holding on to the vessel that delivered the bad news. That's the trait of a good nurse. Now let's look at example B. They say I, they say I am the best take, test taker at school. My hands never shake under pressure. My mind could be racing, struggling to find the next ideas for a timed essay, but my hands follow my thoughts calmly, leading a string of perfect handwriting. This is because I'm the daughter of a nurse, trained never to show a sign of uncertainty. Thanks to my mom, I have been able to apply this skill at school. So here, example A has a great use of detail, but the focus is on the mother, not the applicant. So actually example B would make for a stronger essay, right? It turns a similar idea that the mother is a nurse and she has this perfect calm under pressure, but it turns that back to the student as opposed to just focusing on the mother. So we're gonna look at another two examples similar to what we did in the last tip and then we'll vote. So go ahead and read the answers. And again, use the raise your hand function to let me know when you're ready. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of raised hands, so I'm going to go ahead and launch the poll. Um, and don't worry, we're going to send a recording at the end of this Questcast, so in case you aren't able to read these examples or you want to review them, you'll have time to do that with the recording. So let's see. Um, and just as uh, a side note, you can actually select more than one answer for this one. So if you feel like more than one example applies to this tip, feel free to select more than one answer. Okay, yeah, I'm seeing a lot of example C, but a, a fair amount of example B. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna go ahead and end the polling. So thank you everyone for voting. And I'll share the results, right? So 97% said example C, 41% said example B, and 1% said example A. So yeah, so the first one really only discusses, I'm gonna stop sharing these results, one second. Yeah, the first one really only discusses the applicant's father. However, essay B and C mention the father but turn the focus back to the applicant. So I see more of you selected version C, um, which I definitely understand because it does have a stronger focus on the applicant than example B, but I would say both B and C ultimately are focused on the applicant. All right, so let's talk, let's look at the third and final tip. 
So starting with example A, you're not my mother. My sister yells at me as she avoids the spoonful of chicken soup I attempt to feed her. She is sick. She feels burning hot, but she is right. I, in my torn skinny jeans and checkered van sneakers, am not her mother. But for the past five years, ever since our mom took longer shifts at the hospital, a parental role was forced upon me that made me say goodbye to my childhood. That's a good example. B, you're not my mother, my sister yells at me as she avoids the spoonful of chicken soup I attempt to feed her. She is sick, she feels burning hot, but she is right. I, in my torn skinny jeans and checkered van sneakers, am not her mother. But for the past five years, ever since our mom took longer shifts at the hospital, I stepped into a parental role that I might not have asked for, but I'm slowly growing into. So here you can see the examples start the same way, but the last sentence in example A gives a resentful tone to the writer's experience, whereas in example B, the writer reframes the experience to be one of growth. So it may be difficult to reframe certain challenges or experiences in a way that demonstrates growth or resilience, um, in which case it may be a, a good idea to select a different topic or challenge to discuss here. Um, so let's do the same thing. So let's look at these examples. So go ahead and read these and then raise your hand when you're ready and I'll launch the poll. Okay, I see many of you raising your hand, so I'm going to go ahead and launch the poll. So let me know between example A and example B, which version do you think demonstrates positivity? Okay, I'm seeing a lot of example A, a few for example B. All right, I'm going to end the polling and share the results. All right, so most of you voted for example A, which I would agree. So let's see. Right, so great. So similar to the examples we looked at before, both of these versions start out the same and present the same challenge faced by the student, but the way the student frames them in the last one to two sentences is different. Um, so example A offers a more positive outlook, as we noted, and then example B has a more negative one. So you can certainly talk about an experience that's been negative, such as a lack of transportation and a long commute, and you can be honest too. In both examples, the writer states that this is particularly difficult on days I want to stay after school but cannot. So the writer isn't concealing their feelings here, but they also share a positive experience that's come of it rather than just focusing on the negative, however valid it may be. So again, I wanna emphasize, you certainly don't have to portray your experiences as something they are not. Um, however, there's often a way to share difficult circumstances and even negative feelings in a positive way or a way that demonstrates personal growth or resilience. Okay, so now we're going to move on to a few resources you can use while you're drafting your essays and then briefly review our timeline. So you can find more specific resources, including additional essay examples and um, just some other grammar tips in our Student Resource Center. So first you can go to questbridge.org and then you would hover over high school students, which is on the far left. And then you would go over to the far right of the pop-up box and click applying to college under, so it'll be located under Student Resource Center. 
And then once you go to that web page, there will be several different categories that you can choose to um, choose to navigate navigate to. And one of those includes our writing essays page. So I highly encourage you to go to that page and look at all of the resources available to you there. We'll talk a little bit about what's on there in just a moment. So in the writing essay section of the Student Resource Center, you'll find a section on writing through a low income lens, which mentions how to write about difficult circumstances and being mindful of tone and topic choice. So that last tip we just talked about, this could be helpful in thinking of other ways to frame your essays if you choose to talk about this. So some extenuating circumstances could include significant responsibilities in the household, such as providing care for a family member, babysitting siblings, or preparing family meals. Foster care, homelessness, or other temporary housing situations. An unusually long commute to attend school in another district. Your family or community being unsupportive of your educational goals. This is still a unique circumstance. Obstacles, because English is not a first language. So these are these kind of circumstances can help application readers understand the full context of your successes and your academic accomplishments. However, just remember that these are just a few examples and you don't have to write about these extenuating circumstances in your essay if it doesn't align with your broad topic. The reader can always glean family responsibilities and other extenuating circumstances through other sections of your application. And since we read applications holistically, your entire application plays a role in telling your story. You can also check out the detailed FAQ section, which is broken up into three parts. So the first one is mechanics. So for things like when is it appropriate to use sentence fragments, just general ways that you can break up your essay so that it reads more comfortably. So structure, how can I use transitions to improve the flow of my essay, right? There'll be some examples um, and resources you can use there. And then finally, content. So for example, what are some cliches you should avoid when writing your essay? And how, what are some other tips for striking a balance between challenges and successes? And then finally, um, you could also go to our YouTube channel so youtube.com slash questbridge, and you can check out our quest tips video on this section. Um, this will be more practical assistance when you're writing short answers and essays. So a look into some more technical parts of the application, like um, saving your work, word limits, things like that. And yeah, so here is our, up, our quest cast schedule. So if you haven't registered yet, you can register for our upcoming QuestCasts on our website at questbridge.org slash QuestCasts. And if you want to review any past QuestCasts, including this one, you'll be able to find them on our YouTube channel, again, by visiting youtube.com slash QuestBridge. So our QuestCast next week, um, and it QuestBridge staff will share tips for how you can make, make each section of your application shine. So. Um, it'll really go behind the scenes, which is exciting. And you'll hear from other QuestBridge staff, not just myself. So I highly encourage you to go to our website and sign up for that QuestCast. Um, and then if you have questions about today's QuestCast or ones we've had in the past, just check out our YouTube channel. And you can also sign up for our Ask QB Live. So that's coming up in pretty soon as the deadline is closely, is rapidly approaching. Um, and we'll have two sessions where we'll answer some questions live. So for example, if there were questions that you had today, but they weren't directly related to your essay, um, we'll be answering some of those questions then. So let's just look at the timeline quickly before we end. So, right, the application is now open. Hopefully many of you have already started on that. And the deadline is on March 24th, and it will close at 11.59 p.m. Pacific time. Then in April, College Prep Scholars will hear back, and they'll be awarded summer opportunities. And as mentioned, um, the essay that you write in this application will carry over to your National College Match application in the fall, along with many other components of your application. 
Um, that being said, you will have the opportunity to edit and even completely rewrite your essay if you choose, but that's just another benefit of really working on your essay in this application. And then finally, right, you'll be able to apply to the National College Match as a senior in high school. So I see that we do have a bit of time left over. So we'll take a few minutes to review a few common questions from today. Um, and then we'll finish up. So I do see that a lot of the upvoted questions here are about other parts of the application. So since today's Questcast is about the essay, I'm gonna focus on questions related to that. However, if you do have other questions, I do encourage you to sign up for our Ask QB Live Questcast. Uh, that I just mentioned. So those will talk about other general questions about the application that uh, apply to all different sections, not just this one. Um, you can also just visit Ask QB um, to, for further assistance. So we'll have a link to that in a second, um, but that may answer a lot of your questions that you're having. And as a reminder, the recording of this Questcast will be posted to the QuestBridge YouTube channel tomorrow, and you'll also receive it via email. So keep an eye out for that. So the first question I see is, could you go over short answers as well? Yeah, so although we didn't specifically talk about the short answers, many of the tips we cover today can be applied to the short answers as well. So for the College Prep Scholars Program application, there are three short answer questions that have a word limit of 200 words. Since you only have 200 words, it's not necessary to use the broad topic, circumstance, unique point structure that we covered today for that essay, um, or sorry, that we covered today for the essay. However, you should think about some of the other tips we covered today. So things like focusing on you, focusing on the positive, um, those are things that could also apply to your short answers. And again, just remember that the goal of the short answers is for us to get to know you better and learn more about how you think. So it should be focused on you. And it's another great opportunity to showcase your writing ability. Okay, second question I see. How do we write about very difficult and sad circumstances without writing a sob story? So yeah, I hope the tips that we covered today about focusing on the positive helped clarify this for you a little bit. Um, so as a refresher, challenging topics can be written about in a way that illustrates how you've grown as a person through the challenging circumstance. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to find something positive that came out of that circumstance, but it can show how you've grown or how you've developed resilience. So I encourage you to spend some time reflecting on the circumstance you're thinking of and writing about that to see how you've grown. Or sorry, to writing about how to how to see how you've grown. Um, so next question, is it bad if I'm not even close to the word limit? Yeah, so we really encourage you to take advantage of the available space, especially for your essay. So successful essays typically make the most of the word limit. So I encourage you just to reflect, maybe incorporate a few more of those topics we discussed today, right? If one topic isn't helping you to reach your word limit, you can maybe incorporate another topic that has a connecting thread. So next question. So how many topics should I write about? Can we write about anything? So we aren't able to provide direct feedback on topic selection or the amount of topics, but we encourage you to follow the tips and recommended recommendations that we provided throughout this webinar. Um, you definitely do not need to stick with the example topics we mentioned today. Um, and just remember that the essay is where you can tell the reader information about you that is not found anywhere in the application. So Maybe just think about that, think about what you've already shared in other parts of your application and use that space in the essay to tell us more about who you are as a person. Um, and using maybe the information in this class cast as your guide or the other tips and examples on the Student Resource Center, you could also use that as a guide. Um, but if you look at the college essay brainstorming worksheet that we sent out, um, there is space for you to brainstorm three different topics, but you don't have to write about three. So you can choose which topic or topics best tell your story, right? So you could do one topic, you could do two topics, you could do three topics. Really, it's up to you um, as long as you can find a way to connect those and tell your story. So that's all for today. Thank you for joining. Um, I hope to see you at our upcoming Questcasts.
And again, if you have any questions, you can go to questbridge.org slash askqb. If you have very specific questions, you can email us at questions at questbridge.org. Um, you can sign up for upcoming webinars on our website. And uh, yeah, just as a reminder, we'll be sending out the recording tomorrow in an email of this Questcast so that you can review it. So thanks again for joining and hope to see you next week.